was trying to write a song on the piano But the melody's wrong Cause I'm not here with you And everyone said it would be easy But they never wrote without being in harmony Hold the right words, don't come when you're not around And I hate myself for giving in now I want you to know I'm no good on my own I'm facing my fears and I can't do this alone I'm worried about what you might think of me now And that's my greatest fear And I said it out loud I said it out loud I know we had our separate keys Cause you went sharp and I had to go the natural way And music can only go so far Until it's completely off the page Hold the right words, don't come when you're not around And I hate myself for giving in now I want you to know I'm no good on my own I'm facing my fears and I can't do this alone I'm worried about what you might think of me now And that's my greatest fear And I said it out loud I said it out loud And the truth is that I didn't want to write this song And I've been stuck on the course for way too long oh, oh. I was trying to write a song on the piano But the melody's wrong cause I'm not here with you Welcome into the Squawk, and I am now joined by Kellen Sager, the man who just graced our ears with that wonderful song. So, Kellen, just kind of start off, what kind of got you into a love of music? Oh, at a young age, uh, I just started singing, like, on the radio, Bruno Mars, Maroon 5. Whenever a song came on the radio, I'm like, I gotta sing it. <laughs> it was just really fun and exciting to do, yeah. Was there like a particular time that you really remember getting into music and saying that it was something that you were interested in doing for yourself instead of just listening? Oh, it was probably in seventh or eighth grade. Uh, I started writing like parodies of songs, uh, famous songs, and that was just a lot of fun. And then in high school, I started actually writing original songs. So, yeah. What would you say to you is the most fun? Is it writing? Is it performing? Or I guess to kind of start, how much performing have you done in front of other people? I've only done a few um, gigs like at nursing homes and open mic nights, uh, yeah. first Fridays at the art center and everything. And um, the most fun part for me is probably the songwriting. I just love sitting down in my guitar and coming up with, it's always a new challenge for me. Like I'm like, ooh, how do I go with this verse and how do I go with this chorus, so, yeah. Is there a particular genre that you found you like to kind of follow a little bit more and try to emulate in your performing? Pop slash singer-songwriter, yeah, because I just like the, the raw emotion in it, yeah. So, coming into Northeast, have you had 
really some opportunities to kind of expand on your music in any way? Of course. Uh, so at first I went to business and I loved the business uh, department. It was amazing. But really I found my home at the audio recording studio here. I did not know we had that facility and it's just amazing. Uh, I've recorded some of those songs that I've put out and everything and yeah, no, it's just been a blessing, yeah. Just kind of plug it out there, that is, if anybody's interested in that, we do have very awesome facilities, as Kellen said, oh, yeah. so come check it out if you're interested. And so, you're kind, you talked about the recording studio, you're a audio major, did your love of music kind of influence the path that you took in deciding your major? Of course, uh, yeah. Um, one time, after show choir, I was like um, talking with the audio guys, and I was business still, and they were like, hey, you wanna come to the studio? I'm like, sure, and right when I saw the studio, I'm like, this is where I wanna be, because I've always loved music, and just making music, oh, heck yeah, that's like a dream job, you know? So, so kinda one of my last things that I really have for you is, for some people, music kind of has a meaning behind it. What does music mean to you? and sharing your music mean to you? That's a, that's a good question. <laughs> um, sharing my music, I believe everyone has their own perspective and like own story about life in general. So like, it's just awesome hearing different perspectives and different values just brought throughout music, you know, or told through music, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Kellen, thanks for sticking around for the interview. And ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We're going to take a short break. And on the other side of it, Kellen does have one more song for us. A lot of people don't understand what goes into a broadcast. And they don't understand what Carson does to get ready for a broadcast. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. It's intense. Mary had a little lamb. Give me a hundred on the Lakers. Yeah, a hundred. You know I'm good for it. Yeah, just do it. Carson is multi-talented and we're just really thankful he's here. Tonight, this show is for you. I love you, man. I always put cash and tape around my heart so I don't get scarred. You never know what could happen to you, so you gotta be safe from the start. And I know this will hurt me someday, but I don't wanna think about that today. Cause the past is the past and nothing lasts So I guess I'll just try for another day But I'm too afraid of change My parents know me more than I do But they can't rewrite my wrongs I've got to do that all on my own and there's no way around the truth And I know this will hurt me someday But I don't want to think about that today Cause the past is the past and nothing lasts So I guess I'll just try for another day But I'm too afraid of change Whoa, whoa. Someday, 
But I don't want to think about that today Cause the past is the past and nothing less So I guess I'll just try for another day But I'm too afraid of change Your face is an image I can't shake No matter how I fade Kiss a hundred girls and love but this place Do they even savor your taste? And only with you I do break my rules I've been sleeping in later than I'm used to now I've been scrolling through my phone, waiting for you to respond. I've been getting a little out of hand sometimes. Just might get a little wet by the end of the night. A little rain, a little rain, come down on me. Little rain, little rain, come down on me. Welcome back to the Squawk for our pre-St. Patrick's episode. We want to highlight someone on campus who keeps the Irish eyes smiling. My name is Mary O'Boyle and um, I coordinate the education program here at Northeast. Uh, so I work with everyone who wants to be a teacher, um, elementary, secondary, uh, or a paraprofessional or substitute teacher. I teach um, Introduction to Professional Education. Um, I teach um, our practicum course. I teach Educational Psychology. Um, I teach Human Relations in a Pluralistic Society, which is a diversity class for education majors. I teach Educational Psychology. I teach Child and Adolescent Psychology. Um, I have taught French one and two over the years and um, issues of unity and diversity. Coming from Ireland to the US uh, was a pretty major um, a adjustment and I've been here over 30 years now. Um, but at that time there were very few people from outside of the United States coming to small town Norfolk, Nebraska. But actually coming to live in rural America was quite a culture shock. I realized that um, my, uh, that I spoke a lot faster uh, with a really thick accent um, and people couldn't understand what I was saying. Also how I used the English language, um, you know, different words that would be used in back home in Ireland that we wouldn't use here. Um, spellings, you know, I'm a teacher. So there are many of our words that are pronounced differently, not just with an accent, but there's a different syllabic emphasis. I did find, however, that people in Nebraska were super friendly, um, and so are Irish people. Um, so I was really welcomed here. Uh, even though it was kind of a culture shock, I found people to be very friendly and, and kind and thoughtful. And um, yeah, I found it very easy to make friends here. Okay, well, I originally just came for a summer when I um, came over with my band um, to tour the Midwest. Um, I am a, a singer and I also play the Irish fiddle. Myself and other teachers, I was a high school teacher back in Ireland, a bunch of, of us teachers, we had a band together. Like I said, we were invited over to tour the Midwest, uh, made some really good connections here. And before I knew it, I had a scholarship to go to graduate school at Wayne State. I, uh, after my master's, I worked for seven years at Wayne State. Um, I ran the TRIO program there. Um, and I also, that also was our uh, only uh, disabilities office. Uh, and so I, I worked there for seven years, teaching part-time as an adjunct um, professor. Uh, and over those seven years, I really realized that I missed full-time teaching. So when uh, an opportunity arose here to coordinate the education program at Northeast, um, I applied for that and feel so fortunate I got the job and I've been here ever since. Yeah, so my mom, she's always talking about how she loves teaching, um, that it 
it truly is what she was meant to do in her life. She's always uh, coming home, talking about how uh, wonderful it is to work with all the students that she works with, um, telling me the experiences that she has and even things that she's learning from her students. She always says that she might be the teacher, but um, she still learns every day from her students. Um, and it just is really nice to see that uh, you can tell that that's what she loves to do. Um, she really is passionate about what she does and um, that she's happy to be here at Northeast, um, teaching at such a great school with such great students as well. My mom did start out teaching at Wayne State College, um, taught there for about seven years, I believe, um, and then she got an opportunity to come over to Northeast and teach here. Um, she said that really was a blessing in disguise. After she came from Wayne State to Northeast, um, she was saying that she really just does enjoy the atmosphere here better. Um, it's just she's allowed to be more creative with what she's teaching. Um, she felt a better connection with some of the students as well, and it's really just a good situation that she ended up coming here to Northeast. My favorite part about being here at Northeast and um, spending over a quarter of a century here <laughs> um, is absolutely the students. Um, um, we just have the best students. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I feel so fortunate to work with um, young people primarily at this kind of transition from high school into really being fully independent adults. Um, and um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's wonderful. I just absolutely, I love working with students. I love teaching my subjects. I'm really passionate about that. But it's the interactions with the students within the classroom that really um, energize me. And I also love advising all of my students as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely the students. Guy, wake up. Ooh. Yesterday was National oh. Napping Day. So to honor great. that, we sent everyone's new favorite squat correspondent, Will Westlink, out asking people about their nap habits as well as dropping knowledge. All right, so I'm William with the Squawk TV. Uh, did you know that it's National Nap Day? I didn't, but what a great day. I agree. Do you often nap? No, and I miss it so much. That is the best part of college, is that you'd have a chance to take power naps, 20 minute power naps. I miss those so much. I don't know where those are. <laughs> power nap in a long time. Did you know about 52% of adults more than 80 years nap, nap daily? Oh my goodness, oh I wish I could nap. Did you know that it is National Nap Day? I did not. Well, guess what? A cat nap will, of six minutes will enhance your memory and aid your information and attention ability. Really? Do you often take naps? No, I'm too busy for them. Yeah, that's fair enough. I wish I could. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Did you know that dozing during the day for about 90 minutes produces the exact same learning benefits of sleeping for eight hours straight? Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, it's very useful for here on college campus. Yes, it is. Did you know that it is National Nap Day here? No, I didn't. Well, do you feel like you need a nap today? <laughs> yeah. Well, I honestly feel that. How often do you take naps throughout the day? Zero. Zero. Do you have a favorite place to take naps if you do? In my, in my bed, mainly. Fair enough. Couch. Did you know that over 80% of U.S. residents cat nap during the daytime? No, I didn't. You know that a cat nap of less than 20 minutes can actually affect your nighttime habits? Well, now you do. Here in the U.S., it is currently National Nap Day. Did you know that? Oh no, I didn't know that. Someone should have clued me in beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you often take naps? Um, not as many as I wish I could, but sometimes. About how long do these naps usually take? Um, I would say like one to three hours, if that, so. That's a good nap. That helps you retain your memory. It also helps with heart disease. Oh really? So yeah. I should be taking more naps then. Naps so. are good for the body. <laughs> awesome. Do you know that between four to six percent of the overall U.S. population suffer from a condition called hypersomnia? No, I did not know that. What's that? It is another form of sleep disorder that is results from having sleepiness in the daytime, meaning the patient spends more time 
asleep during the day than at night. Okay, wow. And did you know that about 0.02% of people can't regulate their sleep cycles properly, affecting most of their daytime? Oh, really? Okay. No, I did not know that. Well, now you do. Well, thank you. <laughs> See? He knows this natural map day. Would you go away? <laughs> did you know that it is National Nap Day? I didn't until two minutes ago. Do you often take naps? Uh, often? Not as often as I would like, but once in a while. Usually once on the weekend, maybe. That's good. Um, did you know that the best napping time is about eight hours from your waking up and eight hours before your sleep at night? Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of the day. How often... How long do you get to take a nap for? Hmm, maybe half an hour? That's still better than the normal, because if you take a nap of less than 20 minutes, it will impact your sleep at night, causing you to have a better chance of getting insomnia. Really? Yes. And I believe that if you take those 20 minute nap breaks, your energy's up, you clear your mind, and you can finish the day well. Well, thank you, President Barrett. You bet! Go nap! Did you know that it is National Nap Day? Do you often get to take naps? On weekends, occasionally. <laughs> About how long do you get to nap? Um, my naps usually last a couple hours, like five, four to five hours, something long number. <laughs> That's a good nap. What do you think is the uh, best place to nap or best time of day to nap? Time of day is right after lunch. Best place, probably my recliner at home. That is fair enough. Did you know that about 6% of adults are currently battling with insomnia? I do not know. Did you know that each company in the United States incurs around an estimated $63.2 in costs due to insomnia every year? No, didn't know that either. Well, now you do. <laughs> uh, did you know that it's National Nap Day? Today I know now. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Do you often take naps? Yeah. What do you think is the best place to take a nap? Um, either like in my bed or on the couch. <laughs> Fair enough. Did you know that you can get up to 10 hours improved of the alertness from a cat nap? Just 60 No, I did not know that. <laughs> Do you know that about 85% of mammals actually take naps? Mammals? Yeah. Oh. Random animal animals. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. And then, did you know that having a cat nap of about less than 20 minutes can actually affect your daily nighttime habits? Oh, okay. That's good to know. So always take a nap at least 20 minutes or more. Good. We should really just take a nap right now. Welcome back into the squawk, and now it's time for Bacon Bits with everybody's favorite, and might I add, single chef, Guy Bits. Guy, what are we cooking up today? Uh, we're cooking up no-bake sugar cookies. I believe that's what they are. Sweet. So, first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add one-fourth cups, or one and a half cups, sorry, uh, of these. We don't have any measuring cups, so we're just going to eyeball it. It's about like one cup, hopefully, a little bit more. And then I feel like that would be about half a cup. All right, Carson Brader, or you're not Carson Brader. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that Carson. I'm not. Carson, would you like to do the honors of getting one fourth peanut, or one and a half cup, or one? Sorry, one cup of peanut butter. One out. cup, I will. Ladies and gentlemen, you would think after doing a month's worth of shows that Mr. Bits would know what my name is. You're really hard to forget, so. Sometime today would be nice. Maybe this may or may not be an issue at some point. 
All right, that's good. That's good. Oh, I like it. All yeah, right. I say that's good. Okay. I feel like that's more than a half a cup, but okay. Oh, uh, you said a one. A, you said one. I cup. said a half a cup. You said a full cup. I said a half a cup. <laughs> And then I'll do the honors because I don't trust you with measuring stuff anymore. <laughs> we'll do one third of honey. So, like, golly. Oh, I feel like that's good right there. Yeah, you know, Mr. Sevening's just always making a racket back there. Whoa! Income the spoons. You'll be open up the MMs. Yeah, I'm, where the heck did like, that come from? Golly, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, open up the M&M's like the good person you are. Right there you are, sir. Okay, don't do anything with them, I guess. Do you <laughs> tell me how many we need? Uh, we need about one fourth, so... I feel like that's good enough right there. Collar good, yes Collar sir. Collar good, yes. And then... These are, these are what we like to call our optional ingredients. Right here, the these the pecans, uh, coconut. Yes, coconut strips, and then semi-sweet chocolate. Yeah, give them a little bit more modeling right there. You know, there you go. <laughs> Are we using any of our optional ingredients today? Do you want to? That's the question. You're you're the I'm a guest on your show. Let's start with some chocolate. Okay. Without making the mess as I did, I'm a bad example. Tell me when you feel like that should be good right there. Okay. You know, and now we mix. Okay. We might need some more. <laughs> I feel like it's just all oats right now. Yeah, it's just all oats. We might need to get some more peanut butter. I feel like you told me there wasn't enough earlier, but okay. I'll grab up. A normal spoon. Yeah, because we probably don't want to put the. We'll put some more. <laughs> more honey in there. Look at Carson Snitzler. Got his name right. There you go, guy. Alright, it's coming together now. There we go. Oh my god, there's still lots of oats left. Let me know if you want some more peanut butter. Yeah, give me a little bit more peanut butter. That's okay, we'll have the great Dr. Sevening clean it up for us. Like that idea? Alrighty. I believe we're gonna have a play. Oh! <laughs> we're having a play! <laughs> we <laughs> <was> incoming! <laughs> we have stuff being launched at us from all angles. <laughs> we ready to start forming everything? Yeah, let's form up the balls. Ooh, they're still pretty sticky too. You can make your own balls. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, where did you find this recipe by chance? Oh, the great old Dr. Sevening gave me this recipe. He said it was from his great grandpappy's <laughs> recipe book. <laughs> I didn't know if it was from Mrs. Bits, because we really need to get her on the show sometime. No, we don't. <laughs> Mrs. Bits, we're out there. No, 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 Just no, right, no, this is a taste test now. Sounds good. Really peanut buttery. Not too bad. Maybe if the staff would have provided us with some measuring utensils and not having me to bring my own stuff, that would be awesome. Well, you're the chef, so you should bring your own stuff. <laughs> hey, bring your own stuff. Um, 
but yeah, remind me of the protein balls that I've used to. Add. I know that sounds weird, but old Mama Bits would make protein balls for wrestling. Which is why we need Mrs. Mm -hmm. Bits on here. But anyway, guys, these are really good. And ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us tonight on the Squawk. And we hope you will join us again next week, as now I'm dirty. And we'll see you next week. Same time, same place.